Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know I review many photographic, audio and video related products. Well, I've recently reviewed the Nikon Z5. Now, I'll put a link up here or up here, up here, I think it is, uh, to that particular video. Um, and I've reviewed the Nikon Z6 in the past. I love both cameras. In fact, I'm filming the close-up shot on my Nikon ZFC, although the wide shot here is being picked up on with Sony A6600. And there is a reason for that, and you'll see clearly in just a moment what the reason for that is um, but the Nikon cameras are fantastic and the Z5 and the Z6 are very comparable in price particularly if you're looking for a used Nikon Z6 uh, against a new Nikon Z5 now I picked up the Nikon Z6 I mean, I've, had, I've had two for several years I sold one of them and I've bought another one and I picked up uh, this Nikon Z6 body only from Wex Photographic here in the UK uh, in February of 2022. And I picked this up for 850 quid um, and very, very lightly used with a 12 month warranty. Now, I have been criticised in the past for comparing new against used or for recommending people buy used cameras. I'm not going to change that recommendation. I think buying used is a really cost-effective way of getting into photography and or video um, and enables you to use that spare cash uh, either to keep in your bank you know in your bank account or for buying decent lenses flash guns grips tripods whatever it might be and uh, you know if you buy from a decent supplier now i can only go by what's here in the uk there's bound to be other good suppliers around the world. But here in the UK, I can think of Wex Photographic particularly, uh, MPB are very good, Park Cameras. It's, the list kind of goes on, to be honest. There's some really, really good suppliers of second-hand gear. And Wex do offer a 12-month warranty. So, you know, why not buy used? They do check them out, so you know you're going to get a good piece of kit. So, now we've got that out of the way, I picked up a Nikon Z6 here, as I said, for... Um, 855 quid body only um, and the new Nikon Z5 which is this one uh, around about 1300 quid so you're saving about four to five hundred pounds for buying in theory a better spec camera and I'm just going to very briefly go through uh, in this video what I see as the main differences between the Z5 and the Z6 and why you might choose one over the other. Now the Z5 has one distinct advantage over the Z6 and likewise the Z6 has another distinct advantage over the Z5 and that's why I picked up another Z6. So let's just briefly go through it. Now the viewfinders on both are identical so you've got a, uh, I think it's a 2.6 million dot viewfinder. I should put that in the description what it actually is uh, but it's a really bright and a really really nice viewfinder on both the Z5 and the Z6. Um, the three inch articulating screen are very similar. The Z6 is a uh, higher resolution than the Z5 but not by a massive amount, but uh, by a small amount. So you're not going to see big differences there in the screen resolution, and you're going to see no differences in the viewfinder. So from that point of view, they're both, you know, uh, one or the other, really. Um, it's got, uh, on the, uh, as far as cards is uh, concerned, there is a difference there. Now, on the Z6, uh, Z5, which is what we have here, this is the Z5. Um, on the Z5, it takes two SD cards. So um, you've got uh, one and two, uh, slot two, slot one. One above it, one above the other. There. Um, now that is great if you're doing uh, live events, you're doing weddings, particularly for weddings. Uh, but anywhere where you need redundancy, where you need a backup. Now this is where the Z5 does score over the Z6. The Z6 only has the one card slot. It's got the one card slot on the side there, which is basically an XQD card slot. Um, so that takes the more expensive XQD or uh, CF Express card type Bs. Um, I've got an XD, XQD card in there um, and that's what that takes. So the cards are more expensive and there is only one of them. Uh, so that's a difference there again. 
if you're doing something like weddings or live events, you may be a bit concerned going out taking photographs or video with a camera that only has the one card slot. It's not really a problem for video because you could attach an Atomos recorder and do a backup recording on the Atomos recorder or a Blackmagic uh, video assist. So I don't see video being an issue with only having one card slot, uh, but it may be an issue if you're doing photography uh, because you haven't got that redundancy, you haven't got that backup. Um, and that's where the Z5 really, really does score. Uh, same uh, lens mounts, it's a, a Nikon Z mount. Uh, we've got the Z, Z, uh, uh, Z6 here, so it's the same uh, lens mount, um, Nikon Z mount, and it is adaptable, so you can uh, you know, fit many, many different types of lenses uh, using an adapter. I've got the Mega Dap adapter, that works great. It's, it, uh, it's an autofocus adapter, uh, and that adapts Sony E-mount lenses to the Z-mount system and it retains the autofocus. Again, I'll put a link up here somewhere to my review of the Megadap adapter. So uh, the autofocus is almost identical between the two cameras. So it's got uh, face detect, eye detect and animal eye detect uh, and an animal face detect on both cameras. So you're not gonna find any issues there. The handling is very similar. If you look at the uh, handling, of the two cameras, the grips are very similar. Um, they're both just two very, very similar handling cameras. You will notice on the Z6, which is the one on the left there, the Z6 has got a top plate. So if I turn this on, you can see it's got a top plate. So if, you, if you're if you using the camera and you've um, got it on a tripod, you can clearly see what your settings are on the Z6. The Z5 has no top plate. I don't really find that an issue, to be honest. Um, but uh, you'll see the PASM dial on the Z5 is moved to the right-hand side, where on the Z6, it's on the left-hand side. But, uh, you know, just a slight change there. But the grip is pretty much identical. So the handling and the grip is pretty much identical between both of them. Um, and the other really nice thing is um, you've got the same function buttons on the Z5 and the Z6. So if you're setting them up and you're changing cameras on a regular basis, you can set both function buttons up, well, all function buttons up exactly the same way. I think that's marvelous because on the front of the cameras, but both the Z5 and the Z6, it's got two function buttons um, just about there. You can just see them, there we go, you can just see them there. So it's got the two function buttons, function one, function two, and that's on both the Z5 and the Z6. So that is, that is awesome. Um, it's also very similar to the Z50, which is their APS-C crop sensor camera, much smaller, much lighter, um, but you can see the resemblance between the Z5 and the Z50. Um, there, oops, we can see that. The Z5 and the Z50 are set up, you can't see that too well, but you know, I can assure you the Z5 and the Z50 are set up very, very similar. You can see there on the Z50, the top plate's pretty much identical to the Z5, um, and the grip and the two function buttons on the front there. Uh, are very similar. So again, if you're running, you know, Nikon cameras and you want to set them all up to be the same, you certainly can do that. You can't do that on the ZFC, that's a completely different design of camera, but you can do it on these ones. Um, so there's no differences there. 24 megapixel sensor in both of them, so you're not really going to see a, a discernible difference in the image quality between the two. Not for photographs, you're not. Uh, you will in low light because the Z6, well, which, is the, which is this one, has a backside illuminated sensor which helps with high ISO settings and it helps with low light and that's on the Z6. Obviously I can't physically show you that because there's no point. Um, the back of the cameras are pretty much identical. So the function buttons, again, getting back to the function buttons and layout, the autofocus, everything there is pretty much the same. So, you know, uh, as, if, as it says, a few tweaks and a few differences as far as handling and the layout of the controls, uh, basically with the top plate. Um, but the function buttons, the grip and everything else pretty much the same. So um, 
so far, if you're a photographer, go with either camera because you're not going to have an issue with either of them. But go with a Z5 if you do need that redundancy and that backup because the Z5, as I said earlier, has got two SD card slots, whereas Z6 has only got the one card slot, be it that it's XQD, but it is only the one card slot. Now, if you're into video, there is quite a big difference between the two cameras. And I would say if you're predominantly a videographer, you're probably best off buying a used Z6 and putting the balance of the money either towards getting an Atomos recorder or to lenses or a tripod. I'm going to explain why I would suggest the Z6 for video. Although, to be honest, I do use the Z5 for video and I've been using it for the last month or so and it's great, you know. Um, but where the Z6 scores for video is in 4K. Now, the Z5 does 4K video, that's fine and dandy. But on the Z6, it has um, no crop. The Z5 creates a 1.7 times crop. So it basically acts like as if it's the Z50 or the ZFC because you've got the, that uh, crop factor, the APS-C crop effectively, although it's a little bit tighter than an APS-C crop. So uh, even with full frame lenses, you do get that uh, 1.7 times crop on the Z5. You don't get that on the Z6. The Z6 gives you the full width of a sensor. So if we go to, I think it is in video mode, um, that's in stills mode, and we now put it into video mode, oops, we put it into video mode. Uh, let's go down to video mode. You've got the full width of a sensor in uh, 4K. And that is marvellous. But what you can do, I've set up a function button to be able to change the, uh, certainly in video, to be able to change that crop. So you see there, I've, look at me hand out the way. You can see there I've got that set to FX mode, which is basically uh, full frame. Uh, the full width of a sensor. So let's now change that. How difficult is it when you're trying to show somebody? Right, let's get that level. So that's in FX mode. And we change that now to, sorry, that's FX mode. So that's the full width of a sensor. And then one push of my function button, I can now put that into DX mode, which crops it in about 1.7, well, it's about 1.5 times crop. So um, you can use one lens. I've discussed this many times in my videos. The great thing with these full frame bodies, it certainly is with Sony cameras as well. Um, not on the Z5, that is only in crop mode. You can't do that with a Z5. But with a Z6, Z7, Z6 Mark II and Z7 Mark II and the Z9, um, you can set it to either DX mode or FX mode, and you're not losing quality. It's still 4K, but you, it's changing the amount of the sensor that it's using. And um, you've got one lens, but it's basically either uh, 50 mil in full frame, which is what I've got on it. It's a 50 mil f 1.8. Uh, that's what's fitted to my uh, Z6. But in crop sensor mode, that's about, uh, what's that's gonna be about 75 mil. So you can zoom in not actually zooming, but you can crop in tighter. I think mean, that's phenomenal. I mean, that's a great feature with these full frame bodies. And that's where the Z6 totally scores over the Z5. Also, it's got N-Log built into the camera. So you can record N-Log on the camera. You can't do that on the Z5. That's only got your standard profiles. And also, the HDMI output on the Z5 is only 8-bit. So if you're output into something like the, hatch, ha, bleh, 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 the Atomos uh, Ninja 5 or the Ninja Flame or the Inferno, whatever, you're only going to be able to get an 8-bit uh, recording. Where with a Z6, it'll output 10-bit. Uh, and also, if you paid for the RAW update, it'll output uh, RAW, which I haven't done. I've not paid for the update on this. Um, it's purely uh, N-Log out. But it'll do 10-bit RAW. And that is fantastic, particularly if you output into something like the Atomos. I'm outputting my, Nikon, uh, my Sony A6600, which is getting the wide shot here. That's output into my Atomos uh, Ninja Inferno. And um, that's outputting, I think that's an output in an 8-bit file, but the Nikon would output a 10-bit file. The only thing is, when you are outputting uh, the 10-bit file to an Atomos recorder with a Nikon Z6, it won't record internally on the XQD card. So 
you do need to be conscious of that. Uh, if you want to record internally on the XQD card and get a backup on the Atomos or vice versa, you need to record in 8-bit. That way it will record on both. And that's handy if you're doing events, weddings, anything where you do need that redundancy, you do need that backup. So what I'm trying to say is, the big differences are uh, for video with a Z6. If you're more into video, you are wiser getting a used, potentially a new as well, but a used Nikon Z6 if you get it from a right dealer. Um, and the Z6 handling is great. That information display on the top does have its uses. It does show, you know, your battery life, shutter speed, apertures, um, you know, etc., etc. Um, the mode dial is lockable, so you can't accidentally move out. That locks into position, so that is great. Um, but I say the grips on both the Z5 and the Z6 is fabulous. My favourite, my favourite of all of them. Um, batteries are the same, kind of the same. The is there's a A, B, and C uh, Nikon uh, EL15 batteries. Uh, this Z6. Uh, is slightly older style takes of the B, but the um, Z5, you can charge the battery uh, via USB-C in the camera. And I think that's great. You can't do that on the Z6, but effectively they're both interchangeable. Um, that's the, the battery, nothing special there, but that's a uh, standard EL15 battery. Um, and the nice thing is if you've got any of the older ones, they're both interchangeable. So you can use, use you know, one set of batteries for, both cameras um so that is it in a nutshell uh you know as i say the, the back of them is pretty much exactly the same you can see they haven't skimped on either really um you can see they're both very similar there in the design the layout um get that level <laughs> um yeah you can see they're both pretty much identical uh, but the resolution on the Z, uh, Z6 is just that little bit better than it is on the Z5. They both support SnapBridge, so you can save your images to your mobile phone. Um, I love the Zs for that. Um, I found other camera manufacturers, the Fujis, the Panasonics, uh, the Sonys, awful. They're all awful apps. They're not very good apps at all. I'm finding SnapBridge very reliable and very good because um, I can output these images straight to my phone and I can upload those to uh, you know Facebook, um, Instagram, whatever I might like to do with them. And I think that is wonderful. Um, both shoot raw, you know, uh, photography wise they're both very similar apart from the two sd card slots so um there we go now i will put up on my flicker i was actually going to go through some images on my computer i'm not going to bother doing that um because they are both very similar but what i will do is put um, some sample images of the z6 and the z5 on my flicker page there will be a link to my flicker page in the description below it's well worth taking a look at those images on flicker um, you get a much better resolution and you can actually look at the exif information uh, you know because flicker shows you the metadata of you know what that photograph was taken with so look at them on flicker rather than looking at them here i would highly recommend that so there we go thanks very much for watching i hope you found this comparison of some use particularly if you're looking at buying either a z5 or a z6 and as i say i've got to reiterate don't be put off buying used buying second hand if you do buy from a right dealer i can't uh, you know say which is the right dealers in other countries but i can certainly recommend the likes of wex photographic park cameras mpb um, those three particularly i've used a lot and i do constantly use all the time so um you know and i've never had an issue with them uh, so there we go thanks very much for watching i hope you found this useful please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so hit the like button if you like the content of this video i'd really really appreciate that and leave any comments in the comment section below. That's always really helpful. I do try to reply to as many as I can, uh, but I don't reply to everyone because of, you know, all the things that are going on. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos relating to video and photography. Cheers for now. Bye.